Hello, everybody. This is uh, Cesar. I'm a, I am an enrolled agent and I help uh, U.S. citizens and residents uh, take care of their tax obligations at home and outside the U.S. Today, uh, I'm making a video because recently Congress passed a law that will require crypto exchanges to issue Form 1099. Uh, these are forms that are already issued by stockbrokers, for example. And in this form, uh, the broker reports um, how much you bought, how much you sold, uh, how much you gained, uh, how much you lost. They send a, uh, a form to you, to us, I should say, and they also send a form to the IRS. And then that allows the IRS to check your tax return against what the um, broker reported. So if you if you report uh, $10,000 in gains, but the broker said that you had $50,000 in gains, then I'm like, all right, uh, this guy is short 40K. We're going to adjust his tax returns. Uh, We're going to adjust his taxes. Now he owes us, you know, whatever that is, uh, $3,000, $4,000. Not only that, they also send you a collection letter and they also charge you interest and penalties for not having done your taxes correctly. This is why um if you need help with your taxes i will show my uh, uh information at the end of the video but you can uh go to my website at caesartax.com i offer 20 minute uh free consultation so you can book me there and you know i can answer any questions you have about taxes on crypto coins or any other tax related question so where was i so um this law uh or the act rather, I don't know, I hope you can see this, is uh, 1,039 pages. That's the whole infrastructure bill. But the the part about the crypto reporting is just like two pages, just two pages, right? So let's start here. Uh, information reporting for brokers and digital assets. Um, before this law, some brokers were already reporting to the IRS. They were already issuing Form 1099, and Robin Hood was one of them. But the biggest one, uh, crypto exchanges in the US, which are Coinbase and Bitfinance, were not because they took the position that the regulations before were unclear, and therefore, you know, they don't have to comply. Now, this makes it clear, uh, if I can find. Okay, so this is very, legal a lot of legalese language in here but what matters is like broker any person who for consideration commissions is responsible for regularly providing any services effectuating transfer of digital assets on behalf of another person so basically crypto exchanges uh this law is supposed to start in 2024 but everybody expects uh the exchanges to start sooner because you know it's a uh, logistical challenge besides uh they need to collect information about the activity before 2024 because by 2024 you know say you buy something now and sell it in 2024 then the form in 2024 should have the information how much you bought it for so it is expected that it will start sooner also congress can pass another law tomorrow saying never mind we said 2024 women 2021. So I think this is just, they got it in, which is maybe what they wanted. And now they can move it up, uh, you know, the deadline. Not only that, but when a law, when a tax law is passed, it goes into the internal revenue code, which as you can see, is, is, is big. But one section of the code that is two pages can become 200 pages or 300 pages when the treasury issue the regulations. The regulations are the interpretation of the law by the US treasury. And both of these internal revenue code and the regulations are the authority on the law, not the IRS instructions or articles written by uh, CPAs or enroll agents like me, but the internal revenue code and the regulations, and the regulations can be large. So by the time the regulations are written, 
this is going to become more complex. Um, now, we all should be paying our taxes no matter if the broker reports or not. So, for example, if let's say I bought this internal revenue code for like $150 and then I sell it to somebody for $300, that's a gain of $150 and I should be reporting that. Nobody is going to report that if he paid me cash. You know, nobody knows except me, but I'm supposed to be reporting that. So we, we, we all should be reporting it anyways, but soon they will, you know, they will know <laughs> what's going on. Uh, so um, now some, some people are already trying to, to get around this law. And for example, they say, well, just uh, put your money, your crypto into an exchange that is not based in the U.S. I guess that could work for, for a moment, but um, one thing, the IRS already forces foreign banks to report on U.S. citizens uh, abroad through FATCA. And it is easy to see how something like that can come with this law, either before it comes into effect or after. So I don't think that's really gonna last long. On top of that, um, if you're doing something shady, which you shouldn't do, or maybe you're not doing anything shady, it looks bad. It looks bad if you move your crypto from a US exchange to a foreign exchange, either all of the sudden or by step. So it, this, if you have questions about it, uh, go to my website, Caesar Tax dot com or send me an email at caesar at caesartax.com and we can you know have a, a quick a quick call okay that one thing the other thing is that um they also uh pass a know your customer laws which means like just like when you open an account in a bank they're supposed to know where you live they have to check your id they have to they have to make sure you are who you are so this is also coming to crypto exchanges and the other thing is that there was already a law that required let me see if i can find it here Second, any any time you maybe maybe it's a different part of. One second, one second. Oof. Any time you you use ten thousand dollars or more in cash to buy something, the store has to fill out a form and tell the area that you use ten thousand in cash. Anytime you deposit $10,000 or more in cash in a bank, the bank is supposed to file a form as an IRS. Some people try to get smart and they would deposit $9,950 to be under the threshold, but that doesn't get you out of, the, uh, out of the hook because if the teller suspects you are doing that on purpose, which is obvious you are doing that on purpose, or even if it's not of it, because it's only the suspicion of illegal activity. They are supposed, I, I was a teller at one point, I was supposed to file the form also. So now then some people try to get even smarter and they say, all right, well, I'm gonna deposit 4,000 in Monday, 5,000 on Tuesday, 2,000 on Wednesday, and I'm never gonna be over 10,000 or close to 2,000. Well, that is also suspicion. Like, sus suspicious activity. Then they got even smarter yet. Uh, so we're gonna deposit uh, 5,000 uh, on Monday on one branch, and I will deposit 6,000 on Tuesday in another branch, and 7,200 in a third branch. That is also that also gets caught. I mean, you know, uh, the banks can see how much you're depositing, and uh, it does take a while, but you know. If you have a legitimate business, that is cash based, you know, I don't know, like a car wash, cleaning service, restaurant, just deposit whatever you have, let them fill out the form and then do your taxes correctly. That, that Being reported on that form does not mean they're going to come for you. It just means the IRS is informed, but as long as you're reporting your taxes correctly, there's nothing to fear. All of that to say that now this is going to apply to cryptocurrencies too. <laughs> so if you pay somebody, with more than ten thousand dollars in cryptocurrency, they're going to have to file the form as well. So you are unnoticed. And then, all right, that's it for now. Uh, so 
you know, just do your taxes right and you should have no problem. And I don't have my website open in one second here. Okay, hopefully you see that. That's my site. And if you go here, book online, I'm part on the appearance. I'm still working on it with a web developer. And then you can book, you know, a free 20 minute consultation. And then we can talk about whatever your question is. Talk to you soon.